Okay, so apologies for how fragmented this video is. Um, I've been trying to sort out those lines that were going down the screen in the video. I think the problem is basically that the, when the camera gets too much light in uh, to it, it cannot handle it. Uh, so it starts doing that strange thing where it sort of has the lines sort of going through it. It looks like one of those uh, when you see videos that are supposed to generate epileptic uh, epileptic fits. Uh, it looks like one of those. Um, so I, um, I I think I found a solution. I'm now positioned myself uh, between the light and the camera to try and lessen the amount of light that is going into the poor camera. Okay, so back to this proof then. So uh, we have our Z point, which I uh, have relabeled X0 plus I, Y0. So it, it was originally, it was X plus I, Y, but now I've just added these little zeros on, uh, which denote that it's a specific point. So Z is a specific point. I've picked some complex number, uh, Z, which is X0 plus I, Y0. Okay, uh, and um, these two numbers, X0 and Y0, are real numbers, but we cannot guarantee that they are rational numbers. Okay, so what we now want to do is prove that there is a Gaussian number somewhere within this box. So what I'm going to do is say, let's consider all complex numbers, X plus I, Y0, where we fix the the y component of the complex number, so we fix it so that it varies along this blue horizontal line here. And I only want to consider complex numbers that are in between uh, this point here, which is the epsilon two over 2 uh, distance away from z along this horizontal line, and the z point. So if I consider those complex numbers along here, well because of the fact that there is a rational number between any two real numbers. So if I consider um, the two real numbers, which are x0, which is the real number corresponding to the z point down here. So this is x0, if you like, if we draw uh, the real axis down here. The re uh, so this is the real axis. Uh, so this is x0 down here, and this is x0 minus epsilon over 2. Well, because of the fact that there is a rational number between any two real numbers, there will be some rational number down there. So I'll take that rational number. So let's call that uh, Q. Um, let's call that Qx, uh, the rational number for the x component. Okay. So we will now take uh, the complex number uh, corresponding to Qx plus the um, this fixed imaginary component. So we now take Qx plus i y zero. So we've got a rational component in the real spot now. Um, so that's an improvement certainly. We this yet, however, isn't yet a Gaussian number. The reason being that we don't know that y0 is for certain a rational number. But now what we can consider is if we fix qx and we draw the um, vertical line through all complex numbers with um, with real component qx, i.e. this pink line is all complex numbers with in real component qx. So um, now what we're doing is letting qx uh, plus i y, and um, what we're considering is qx plus i y, where y is any real number. But again, we're not interested in any of the real numbers outside of this box. So in fact, we're only interested in y, where y is between. In this case, we want it less than or equal to y zero. So we want it in this box. So we want it less than or equal to y zero, which is the imaginary component of our complex number z, i.e. that's the complex number here, if you took qx plus y0, that was our i y0, that was this complex number, so that corresponded to this one here. Okay, and we want it to be less than or equal to the bit up here, which is y0 plus epsilon over 2. But again, what we can do is we can say, well, uh, between any two uh, real numbers, there is a rational number, so find such a rational number, which is qy, and then take the complex number qx plus iqy, that is guaranteed to somewhere be within this box. Uh, so we found a Gaussian number, because these two things are uh, rational numbers, so I have found you a uh, rational, a uh, Gaussian number, sorry, uh, a complex number with um, rational coefficients, which is within that box. So basically, what I've proven is that because this ra uh, Gaussian number is within that box, it's also within the epsilon ball. So given any co arbitrary complex number in the complex plane, and given any arbitrary epsilon ball, I can construct one of these boxes, and I can find a Gaussian number within that box, which implies it's within the open ball, which implies uh, that uh, any complex number is a limit point for this set of Gaussian numbers, which implies that the complex numbers with the usual Euclidean metric uh, is um, a separable metric space.